bit on Uzbekistan. Well, to us, Uzbekistan serves as a case study of all the things that are wrong about cotton, more or less. It's one of the biggest cotton exporters in the world, it's second only to the US, and it's of extreme importance to the Uzbek regime, primarily as a provider of hard currency. Uh, and this is the regime that is internationally condemned for its human rights abuses, not the least the crackdown on civilians in Andijan in 2005, which some of you may have heard of, resulted in hundreds of deaths. However, despite all the benefits to the regime in terms of currency to the regime, very little of this reaches the people who actually picks the cotton, the farmers and the children who work in the fields. So what basically happens is when harvest season comes, uh, cotton quotas comes from the capital out of the regions. And 95% of Uzbekistan's cotton is currently hand-picked, which is actually much more than it was during Soviet times. And children have been drafted in to make up the labor shortfall. It's a very cost-efficient option. It's basically efficiently subsidizing the industry. So rural schools are closed. Children go to the fields for about three months or so, uh, receiving no education while they're picking the cotton. We don't know again how many children are working in Uzbekistan, it's a fairly close country, but just to give some estimate, in just one region in Uzbekistan, it's been estimated that about 200,000 children was working in one cotton season. So if you add that up, you'll end up with probably about half a million at, at least. And the conditions on the fields are obviously harsh. Um, some children can return home in the evening, other children will be staying in dormitories on farms or even more ironically on, in classrooms. The living conditions are poor, children are at times left with only irrigation water to drink and with insufficient or poor quality of food to eat. The work is hard, they can work 10 hours or more a day, they'll pick around 10 to 50 kilos of cotton. They do receive some money but money is also reduced if you don't pick good enough cotton and you get deductions for food supplies and transport and so on. So a lot of children actually don't get anything at the end of the day. And if you don't pick good enough cotton, you may also end up being scolded, beaten, or detention is another, another thing that happens. Many children are left exhausted and weak after this hard labor. Cotton harvest takes place in the autumn when the temperatures drop towards the end. You can still find children in the fields picking cold or semi-frozen cotton with bleeding fingers. Children have also been reported to apply pesticides with simple water bottles. And there's been accidents and there's a lot of diseases as well associated with this, such as chronic diseases, intestinal and respiratory infections, meningitis and hepatitis and so on. But despite, despite the hard and hazardous work, threats of expulsion from the school keep children in the fields. There are also environmental impacts such as the Aral Sea. Once one of the world's largest lakes, lakes has now shrunk to only 15% of its former volume. It's, about, it's three lakes now, actually, not just one. Almost 20,000 litres of water are withdrawn every year for cotton. A lot of this is actually also lost on the way. Irrigation network is, is particularly bad. About 60% of the water going from the Aral Sea is lost on the way. So, so it's a huge, huge waste. <coughs> so, you can learn more about this in our report in our film, but what's the importance to this audience then? Why do we worry about Uzbekistan so much? Well, actually, it can all be linked home. Between 1997 and 2001, about one third of the Uzbek cotton went directly to Europe. More cotton is now being produced China channel through China, but then again you've got to realise that China is one of the world's biggest exporter of textiles and garments, about 30% of EU's total imports of textiles and clothing comes from China. So you can imagine a lot of those big cotton, if it's not going directly to Europe, which a lot of it still is, it'll come back through China. But the supply chain is not transparent, it's complex, so for an ordinary consumer on high street, they will never know. So what's the message about this then? Should we then just avoid cotton altogether? Well, no, that's not what we're saying. Cotton does have some huge development benefits. 
as we demonstrated for West Africa, for example. What we need to do is ask for the right kind of cotton. We need to change the cotton industry, and this is part of what the Environmental Justice Foundation is doing. We want the cotton industry to clean up its acts, basically. And um, things we'd like to see is an end to child labour in particular, and in particular the kind that goes on in respect to our forced child labour, which is particularly bad. We'd also like to see a label <coughs> on your cotton products where you can see where the cotton comes from. You can see where it's been manufactured. You don't know where the cotton comes from. And that's a problem, which means that consumers do not know if the cotton has come from Uzbekistan or any other country that they'd like to avoid. But we'd also very much like to support more sustainable options, such as organic and fairly traded cotton. And this is where cotton can really, really have a very truly valuable impact. <coughs> Just very quickly, I'm sure you all know this, organic cotton means that pesticides have not been used in the process at all, which always has a number of benefits to the farmers. There's a cost impact, there's most certainly a health impact, and also with organic you'll get premium, so it's another economic benefit coming there. And organic cotton has grown a lot in the past few years, now grown in about 20 countries, so it's becoming increasingly available. And it's growing at a very high rate in terms of retail sales, about 75% growth rate globally, uh, expected to be worth about 2.6 billion by the end of 2008. And then we've got fair trade cotton, basically means that the farmers get a better deal, they receive a fair price, they benefit from acceptable working conditions and so on. This is fairly new, it was launched in 2005. It colours mainly seed cotton, the field level, but there's also standards going through the processing and manufacturing stage. And again, experienced a huge growth since it was launched in the UK alone, about 3,000% in the first year in terms of value. So we can see from these figures that organic and fairly traded cotton is really the way forward. It makes perfect business sense. And more and more people are catching on to this trend. And so hoping as well, I'd, I'd just like to finish off and tell you a little bit what we do in this area. Well, we, we, as I said, we believe that it's very important to give out both the message on what's the problem with cotton, but we also need to provide the positive alternatives. And this is why we teamed up with ethical designers. Um, first and foremost, with Catherine E. Hammond, who some of you might know of. We launched the Save the Future t-shirt, which I'm wearing today at London Fashion Week in February. Uh, this is both organic and fairly traded, so it's got, got all the benefits of cotton. And it's proved really, really popular, which is again proves how organic and fair trade really is the way forward. It's been modelled by Lily Cole, the top model, and it's been covered in a number of glosses around the world and was last seen on KT Tunstall, the singer, at the Live Earth concert in New York last weekend. So it's travelling the world. We also have a number of further collaborations coming up with Christian Lacroix, Betty Jackson, and Luella Barclay, for those of you who know these designers, which we're hoping to launch later this week at the upcoming London Fashion Week. So watch this space, there's more to come. Um, just to finish off, because we've got a number of other speakers, um, I'd just like to thank again for us to be here. Uh, as a charity, this is not normally where we, we always get to talk to people, so it's incredibly valuable to talk to the fashion industry because that's really where a lot of change needs to come from. Um, so I think that will lead to a lot of new collaborations coming up um, and that we all keep moving towards mainstreaming ethical fashion. So don't forget, cheap cotton comes at a high price. Please think carefully about the children breaking their backs in their fields and the pesticides being used and pick your cotton carefully. Thank you very much for your time and attention.